Hi everybody! Welcome back to Taz's Wig Closet at Wig Studio One. Today I just want to sort of stand and chat with you. I've got a few things on my mind, a few updates to share, and also some new things that I'm really crazy about. Coming up. So this morning, I got up early because I wanted to hit Walmart this morning as early as possible to avoid some of the crowds. I was out the door at six o'clock and uh, got, got down to the local Walmart, which is about 15 minutes away. And I had my list and so forth. All I really needed were things to get us through the week like I normally do. Um, however, <laughs> I don't know what it's like in your area, but as soon as I got there, I knew something was up because the parking lot was full. I mean, it's six o'clock in the morning, which is my normal time to go, by the way, um, because I like to avoid the crowds but there was just barely a parking spot. I had to park clear out. Um, a lot of the carts were gone. I got in there and, and a, they usually do these sanitary wipes where you can tear off a sanitary wipe and kind of wipe down the handle of the cart and any other items that you're gonna be touching. And they have that all the time. And I always use that as soon as I go in. Um, but today they were, Everything was gone. They even have a like a hand sanitizer station set up where you could put your hand under and it would disperse some hand sanitizer. All of that was gone. Um, almost all the carts were gone. It was really crazy. And you know what? Today is Wednesday, so I you know you just knew something was up when you first got in. I had no idea because the last time I had been shopping was the prior Monday, and that was really before some of these national announcements of. Um, you know, some limited hours and some some isolation and some social distancing due to this new uh, COVID-19 coronavirus that's going around. So when I got in there, um, you know, I had my grocery list, which was just normal things, and there was no meat. There was no fresh meat. And uh, most of the produce was gone from the shelves. And um, that's kind of the first thing that I go for is my produce and my meat. And then whatever other else I need uh, down the store, the dairy and stuff like that. Um, so I ended up spending quite a bit of time in the store trying to find some things that I needed. And when I knew that I wouldn't find them, I, um, I quickly kind of made some substitutes with some frozen meats and things like that. I, I thought, gosh, if everybody's buying toilet paper, I better get some so I don't run out. <laughs> And it just so happens that they had restocked uh, yesterday. So there was quite a bit of toilet paper on the shelves this morning. So I'm just not going to participate in some of that hoarding mentality that's going on right now. Um, I guess I feel like the situation really doesn't warrant that. We're being asked to stay at home. We're being asked to um, keep a good social distance to protect ourselves and others. Now there are some vulnerable classes of people that are going to need to hoard a little bit more as, especially if they don't have the immediate family to help them. Um, apparently over 60 years old, they're being asked to kind of self-isolate through this period of time and up to four months. And so those people really need to have assistance in terms of um, making sure that they get everything that they need, their medicines, their groceries, and things like that. Um, my mother-in-law is actually opting to stay in Florida. She usually comes home every year for spring and they stay till fall but they both have heavy underlying medical conditions. Um, so they're opting to stay where they're at right now. And I think that's probably a really wise decision. This virus is something that we've never encountered before. We have no immunity to it. Um, and depending on your own immune system and your health situation, it could be very, very serious. And so I do understand uh, these drastic measures that the country is taking. It's just like it's just like going up and in, against an invisible enemy, because this enemy can really hurt us, but we can't really see it. Um, we know it's spreading because it leaves in its path just kind of a swath of destruction in terms of illness. Um, and so I can't fault our governments, our political systems, or anything like that. Uh, for their reactions to this. I think that they are fighting a couple of different wars. So you've got the you've got the obvious uh, virus, and that is a war that we're fighting for our health. And then you've got the financial markets that are just in chaos right now because of that. And it just it just really makes you stop and think um, what's really, really important. 
And so I would just urge you all to kind of follow what the government is mandating. Here in Ohio, Governor DeWine shut down all the restaurants and bars, um, which actually displaced my husband from his job. My husband's job depends on the dine-in patrons of restaurants and bars. Um, he, he works for a vending company. Um, he does a collection and service on some of the machines that are for our entertainment inside of restaurants and bars, such as um, jukeboxes, arcade, arcade games, uh, tabletop games, dart boards, um, you know, those kind of those big claw machines that the kids love to play when you were sitting um, waiting for a seat at Denny's and things like that. So that's what they do. And they do ATMs. And so none of this is going to get any action while, uh, where, while there's this uh, ban on dining in, to, in these places. So um, he'll be faced with a period of unemployment. Um, we will be absolutely fine. I'm quite confident of that. Just the very fact that we're humans, having a human life, having an, a human experience. Um, we're going to experience some of these things. I know that with each thing that happens in your life, there is a lesson here. And I think this, this that's going on right now, there's a huge lesson in humanity. Um, we have to realize that we're all one there's no separation. Like we're all one human race. This culture that we have been in, this societal culture that we have been in for so long, that's all about me, me, me. Very selfish. Um, I think that that is the initial reaction in culture when something like this happens. It's like, you know, make sure I'm taken care of. But we can't forget the other people. So for me and my household, we're just gonna kind of hunker down. We're not going to panic. We're going to abide by the recommendations and the rules uh, for kind of stemming the spread of this virus. We're gonna do what we can to protect ourselves and we're gonna do everything we can to protect and help others. And I think that's probably the most logical tack that you wanna take. You wanna learn things, you don't wanna panic. Um, on the other hand, you want to have a great respect uh, for Mother Nature and, uh, and just do the logical and humane things. So this is nothing new for me. I'm always home and I love it. Um, but for many of you, it's going to be a little bit of a change to, stay, to be staying home and coming, coming outside of your normal social routines. It's going to be a little difficult for you um, if that's what you're used to and that's what you enjoy. So just kind of hunker down, understand that this will pass and that it is temporary. In the meantime, watch wig reviews. <laughs> it's so much fun. It's so much fun to talk about hair and to, to, to show hair and to um, have a community uh, that doesn't just come together over hair, uh, but that we have a commonality here. You know, we're, a lot of us are women with hair loss. Uh, some, of, some of us are here just because we want to live our best lives and we want to know what's available out there to help us do that. And I think that if you're going to be staying home a lot, I might just have to step up and do more videos. What do you think? <laughs> um, it helps me just as much as it helps you. So I want to share a couple of new things that I've received recently that I'm really, really loving. Um, many of you know that I partnered with Julia. Uh, jewelry company, artisan jewelry company. I did a uh, giveaway and a unboxing of a beautiful uh, earring and necklace set over the holidays and that went to a very nice home and she has written back since and said how much she loves those pieces. Um, so it makes me feel really good when I can offer something like that. Uh, Julia has sent me a couple of pieces recently uh, for my pleasure and review. I've recently become a rep with Julia because if I'm going to be reviewing some of their pieces, I want to be able to offer uh, something special to my viewers that are watching. So um, I'm now a rep with Julia. There is a promo code that will get you 15% off and I will link that promo code below. So be sure to check that out. If you're looking at any kind of jewelry, check out their website. The jewelry that they're selling, I really love it. It's, it's affordable. It's also an art, they're artisan pieces. So they have an individual kind of, of a vibe to them according to your personality. There's a lot of whimsical, there's some classic and elegant, 
And this jewelry is meant to wear every single day. Um, and it's meant to stand the test of time. So I received this beautiful name necklace from Julia recently. So it's a silver plated, a 16 inch, just a fine chain there. And it's very sturdy feeling. Even though it's dainty and fine, um, it, feels, it feels very sturdy and substantial. Then you have this plating here. So I wanted something like that. I've always wanted a name necklace, but what I didn't want was one of those big New Jersey name necklaces, you know, that kind of weigh your neck down. <laughs> They're known for their big statement, bold, you know, gold jewelry and things like that. Um, and I wanted something a little more dainty, but I wanted to be able to see it as well and enjoy it for every day. And I think I found it right here. And so I thank Julia for sending that to me. It's just gorgeous. And this actually comes in a longer chain and uh, like a child's uh, size. It's just gorgeous. I love it, love it. I'll wear it all the time because this is just my style. Very casual, um, but has a little bit of a statement. Um, the other thing, this is what I'm really excited about from Julia. I got a brand new wedding set. Now this is a sterling silver stackable wedding set. So it's an engagement wedding set. So it comes in three pieces. Okay, so this would be the engagement piece here. And it features a vibrant cut diamond white Julia stone, proprietary stone. It's a very clear stone and it's very beautiful, very realistic looking. It's on a beautifully polished shank there. I love that setting. So it's a nice, solid, sterling setting. And this would be the engagement piece. So here's your engagement piece. And then for the wedding set, after the ceremony, um, there are two flanking bands. Each, they have, each of them have little round matching uh, diamond white stones. So they're stackable. So after the ceremony then, you would nest the engagement piece in the middle of those two bands to get the full stackable set. It's gorgeous, isn't it? So this is a piece that um, I selected because it isn't, um, it isn't too dainty and feminine, but it's not big and garish. Um, it's plain and it's simple in its design, yet strikingly gorgeous. So my mom and I go thrift shopping occasionally. Um, she has bad arthritis and it's hard for her to get around. So we don't go as often as we used to. And I love it when my sister can come along too, um, but she works quite a bit. My mom and I went out last, well, it's been two weeks now, we went thrift shopping at our local Salvation Army, which is our favorite one to go to. It's just like a huge warehouse with just racks and racks, um, clothes, household items, jewelry, purses, you name it, furniture, it's there. And so it's just always such a blast to just walk through there. Some days I walk in and I don't find anything. Other days I find too much <laughs> and that's the way it goes. So last week I actually picked up this windbreaker. It was brand new with tags and I think it's a excursion or something, might be a Kohl's, an old Kohl's brand or something. Um, but it just put me in the mind of spring with all of these beautiful colors. It's hooded, it's, it's lined, it's lightweight. I just love these little, this color. This color just reminds me of spring. And I'm so excited for spring, like come on already. And um, I was just really excited to have it. It has pockets. Guess how much? 99 cents. <laughs> I saw this and I'm like, 99 cents? It still has its tags on it. So um, I'm, I'm not thinking it was mismarked. I just think somebody didn't realize what they had when they tagged it. So 99 cents for that. And um, I was just at Walmart, like I was explaining this morning, getting some things. And when I was headed back up to the cashier, 
I noticed that they had their white t-shirts out. Now white t-shirts, ladies, you understand, those are something that you have to buy every single year. Even if you don't wear them out, they tend to get a little dingy due to washing. There might be a little bit of a deodorant stain on them. So I always like to buy fresh white t-shirts uh, for layering um, throughout the summertime. I always wear them. So I ended up getting, this is one that I bought this morning. I ended up getting uh, three of these and they were $3, I wanna say $3.99. Um, they have two brands that carry this type of t-shirt. The Time and True, which is more of a misses to women. And then they have this one, which is called No Boundaries, which is found in the juniors section. Um, so I ended up picking up these. I do that every single year. I throw out the old dingy ones and get the new ones because I know I'm gonna wear them. It's a staple for me in the summertime. Um, so yeah, head out to Walmart and get yourself some fresh white t-shirts before they're gone. So thrifting is so much fun. And I think that um, if you haven't thrifted for clothes, there are some really good finds out there. And when you when you do, you're, you're actually giving to charity as well. Oh my gosh, you guys, when I was at the thrift shop, I seen the most god awful disgusting thing. And I don't know why they put this on their shelves. I'm gonna put up a picture to show you. This is what appears to be like a 1970s Tony of Beverly wig. I think that a family of mice probably lived comfortably in this thing for many, many years. <laughs> it is a mess and who would ever buy such a thing? I couldn't believe it was on the shelf. So let's talk about sales of wigs, my own personal wigs that I'm selling. I have been collecting wigs for five, just about five years now, and I used to sell quite a bit of them on eBay until I had a really bad experience with a buyer, um, and eBay did not back me up on it. A buyer got the wig, didn't tear it up, but kind of stretched it out, made it look terrible. Um, obviously, they wore it, and then they came back in a week's time or so and said that it was not authentic. Um, that I sold them a knockoff wig. Well, that certainly wasn't the case. I mean, I had all of the, the, the proper tags, the proper box. It was obviously an authentic uh, name brand style, um, but they knew how to work the system. And so they filed for a return and I said no, and they escalated that and uh, eBay and they left me a negative strike on my account. I had been on eBay for 20 years and had 100% positive feedback. So along comes this lady and decides that she's just gonna, you know, when I gave her pushback on the return, she just let me have it. Um, put out their negative feedback, don't trust this seller, so on and so forth. I would, it upset me so much that eBay, after all this time, knowing my reputation as a very good seller, uh, would would not remove that, would, would side with the buyer in that case. So I, that was it. That was the last wig that I sold on eBay. And I really didn't sell too many wigs after that. Um, I sold a few on Instagram, uh, but mainly I kept them around. And in one of my videos, I explained that um, I kept these wigs around because I like to be able to draw on them for reference if I'm doing a comparison, and I still enjoy doing that. Um, but there's just really no reason to keep all these wigs around. So I started, um, and I've been wanting to do this for a while. If you haven't caught my website yet, I have a new website, www.tazswigcloset.com. It's sponsored by uh, GoDaddy platform. And I'll leave all the links below. But I've actually turned that into a, what I call my fresh hair, hashtag fresh hair uh, sale gallery and it's just a scrolling gallery of wigs that I currently have for sale. And I can only accommodate so many at a time, and then when they sell, I'll just continue to add more. So I decided to go ahead and sell them. The other thing is I will be, um, I have a video record of each of the wigs that I'm selling, so that if I do need to do a comparison or something, I don't know why I didn't think about this to begin with, but I have an up close, you know, kind of a spin and a turn for, uh, for each of those wigs before I sell them so that I can pull that footage out when I need to do a comparison or show a color. So I've decided to go ahead and sell off a lot of my collection. So if you wanna check out that, it's 
they're anywhere between 40 and 60% off um, most of those styles. So I'll leave all of those links below. And I'm not getting rich from this at all. A lot of these wigs I purchased my, on my own or I received them in an exchange for a review. So if I take a style and I give somebody 40 to 60% off a of retail on that style, um, a couple things. I have to pay PayPal their 3% that they're taking right off the top for the transaction. Then I have to pay 30% taxes Yes, girlfriends, I have to pay taxes on the wigs that I sell. Now, I can offset that with my invoices of wigs that I bought this year um, as an expense, but for the most part, I have to pay taxes on my wig sales. And then I have to ship it. I offer free shipping. And then I have to pay another $10 to ship it. So I'm making very, very little money. It's very time consuming. You'll never see me own a, a retail store. <laughs> that is just not for me. I like to be on the education piece, I like to show the wigs and talk about them and share my passion for them, but I never ever want to sell them. So uh, get them while they're hot because once they're gone, that's it. I'm not gonna sell anymore. <laughs> um, I'll have a, I'll pare down my collection enough and thin the herd enough that um, I'll be comfortable. So again, I just need to put out there, need to throw this out there real quick. If you're watching this video, please do not fall victim to some of the scams out there, in particular Facebook, Instagram. Uh, they continue to take my images, uh, video and photos to market and advertise their junk wigs. I continue to get after all this time and after preaching and harping on this for so long, I continue to get message, mean, nasty messages from ladies that have purchased and said, Taz, you ripped me off. You sold me a junk wig. And I'm like, I didn't sell you anything. <laughs> you bought that from a scam site. And although I felt really, really bad, there's nothing I can do about it. These sites, I've, I've taken measures to have them. I have devoted hours and hours and hours to have them removed. And if I'm successful, they'll just pop up the next day under a new name. It happens every single time. I've watched it. It is an exercise in futility. It's not going away. So we need to continue to spread the word. And if you're out there and you think you can get a Raquel Welch wig for $19.99, which is the most recent case. Somebody says that I sold them a Raquel Welch wig for $19.99 and it was junk. I'm like, that wasn't me. And it wasn't a Raquel Welch wig. Be careful. So, you know, they thought they were so mad at me. Now, how many, how many other people out there are just so mad and upset with me when it really wasn't even me? It makes me feel so helpless and violated. Um, but we just have to be strong through this and continue to spread the word and do the right thing. So just a quick update on my son. So many of you still reach out and say, hey, how is your son doing? Um, many of you are familiar with the situation where he was in an accident, a motorcycle, very serious motorcycle accident last year. He had a traumatic brain injury, a broken hip, broken knee, um, among some other injuries. Well, as a result of some of that, there was a lot of different things that came up. They they saw some white matter spots on the MRI and thought that it was maybe MS or a brain tumor. A lot of that stuff was ruled out. However, um, they have not ruled out the MS uh, possibility yet. He will have a rescan or another MRI in May to determine if there are any new spots or if the old spots have gone away. So as a result of the traumatic brain injury, he actually had some nerve damage nerves that lead to the muscle in the left eye, okay? And he had double vision for a couple of months after, um, the, after the accident, his left eye was kind of turned inward to where uh, he couldn't see straight. He did not have good binocular vision. The eye doctor is now saying that he's gonna have to have surgery on it to uh, correct it the rest of the way. Um, so he is scheduled to have a, a surgery on the muscle of his eye uh, the end of this month. Now, due to the concerns over the medical system and the virus and things that's happening, they may postpone that because it's not necessary. He can drive with this condition. Um, the doctors are saying that it'll never ever be 100% and he will probably never do his flying job again in the Air Force. He's had time to digest that disappointment in his life and 
Uh, we'll see uh, what's happening here with his, his career. I personally hope that he stays in the Air Force in some capacity. And I continue to get people that are upset with me for reviewing mostly blondes. I can't even believe it. Even when I buy the wig myself, I get, I get some pushback on that. And here's the thing, guys. Blonde is my color. It's the color I identify with. And it's the color that you are most likely to see in my wig collection, some variation of blondes. I like a few reds too. Now brunettes don't really uh, flatter me as such. I'm not afraid to review them. And when I have the opportunity to review them, I will. Um, but most of my wig reviews are going to be of blondes. And there are plenty, plenty of wig reviewers out there that will do other colors. We all tend to gravitate to our home color. Um, I have some friends that do nothing but reds. I have some friends that do all brunettes. And I have a lot more friends that do more blondes than anything else because that's their color. And I understand it. And so although I'm here to help educate you, I'm not going to invest in pieces that I'm not going to wear. It just It's just simply not going to happen. So for the most part, I'm always going to continue to review mostly blondes. So I would still urge you to watch my reviews to get a full description and review of the wig style itself, and then maybe go to another review to see the color. Um, you know, there's a lot of different wig reviewers out there doing a variety of things all here to help you. I need to tell you what I'm wearing today in terms of my hair. Um, this is the Ellen Villas Night style in the color Candy Blonde Rooted. Love it. Just love it. I have this in Caramel Rooted. I did a review on that that I'll post above. That wasn't my favorite color, but I absolutely loved the wig. So I got it in a color that I thought I would really enjoy, and it's really putting me in the mind for summer. Um, <clears throat> Ellen Villa, I think you could have done a little better job on this cap. Um, it fits extremely large on me. I ordered one to review in my last wig review of this style. Um, and that was a very nice fit. Most of them in this ch new changes collection, which Knight belongs to, are more average in size. This particular one is too large. I had to crisscross the adjusters. And you know when you have to do that, that it's way bigger than average. and. Um, what it does, it causes some, it causes some uh, buckling at the nape in the cap. Now, luckily, this is a voluminous style in the back. You really can't tell. But if it were something a little different in style, I probably couldn't wear it. Um, I love, love, love the style. Love the fibers. Very wispy and feathery. Light density. Just a real cloud texture to it. Love that. But this cap leaves something to be desired. I just adore this style. Wigs are not perfect. Um, I have seen enough wigs to know that there are lots of variances. So we can buy, I can buy one of these night wigs an, another year later, buy another one because I loved it so much and it could be different. We can see some, some variances there. And, you know, and that's caused by a few different things. So um, you, the wigs are mass produced. Um, for the most part, most of them are machine made in your machine wefted wigs, but they're also finished off by hand in some cases. Um, so that can, anytime you have a human involved with that process, you can see some differences. You hope that it's not a huge difference in, in a negative way, um, but it does happen. So you just wanna set the expectation that with these mass produced wigs, however expensive they are, you can see differences, you can see variances. I get mail all the time, Taz, mine doesn't look anything like yours. And they're frustrated and lost. Um, I feel really bad when that happens. I'm not, obviously I'm not responsible, but I just want to be very clear about the expectation that you should have as a wig wearer of mass produced styles. Um, you can see differences. You can always return the wig, but of course that does uh, cost you some money. First of all, you're disappointed, then you have to pay restocking and, and whatnot according to the retail guidelines. 
Um, and that's no fun. That stinks. Nobody likes that, but it is a reality. Here's the alternative, guys. The alternative is if we don't like mass-produced wigs, um, if we just simply cannot tolerate the fact that there can be variances among wigs of the same style, and we just boycott them all together, which is your right to do, um, the only other option you have is getting a custom-made wig, and you will spend four to five times the money for something like that. So the only solution is to understand that this can happen um, and to expect it almost sometimes. I mean, if you are budgeting for your wigs, you may have to budget for a restocking fee every now and again, because you know that one of these days you're gonna get one and you're not gonna like it um, for whatever reason and you're gonna to wanna to return that wig. And so a lot of companies understand that and they're as flexible as they can be. It's very expensive for a retailer to accept returns. And so uh, there are some restocking fees and things out there. Uh, but yes, guys, I mean, any time that these are, they, they could be made in different, manuf you know, different plants, manufacturers, um, they could be finished off by a different person, they could have been looked at by a different inspector, there's a lot of different reasons why we can see some variances and you'll just drive yourself insane by being uh, constantly disgruntled about that. That is just a reality of wearing wigs in today's world. I feel so blessed and lucky to have these available to me because if I didn't have these medical grade, which is a higher quality style, mass produced wig, and all I had to choose from was Amazon wigs, or custom made wigs, where would we be? I'd have my couple of wigs and it would be wonderful and I would feel blessed, but I certainly wouldn't be as, uh, as happy and satisfied with the wigs as I am today.